You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's House of Cards After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's House of Cards After Show. Wow, we're back. Season two, yeah. Netflix. Yeah. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, After Buzzers. And I know it's been a long uh, awaited. It seems longer when they slap the whole season on there and people watch it like in 72 hours or something like that. But this is season two of Netflix's exclusive series, House of Cards, starring Kevin Spacey as the diabolical now VP of the United States. How I even pulled this off, it seems so real so i'm your host thaddeus massey and joining me today is hi guys i'm okay hi i'm sophia stanley hey i'm nesta garrick goodness we're gonna get right into this uh episode here because uh there are a few things to cover not to mention the elephant in the room which is uh <laughs> we'll get to it in a minute <laughs> You guys know what it is, poor Zoe. Anyway, choo choo. Right, <laughs> that was just like out of control. <laughs> like, I mean, you guys can call in by the way four two four two five six seventeen twenty nine four two four two five six seventeen twenty nine and uh, give us your two cents or ask any questions or correct us on anything. We watch the episodes just like you guys and and just uh, you know just throw notes and theories and opinions out there. Um, this whole Zoe thing that actually smacked the you know what out of me when I I just couldn't believe he like he went to that level. Nesta, I mean, we honestly, have to discuss this first. It's the like the hottest. I was I I, I think I was just stunned for like about four days. Just like I mean, how and it definitely set the tone for me at least to let me understand okay this guy here means business i mean he's willing to pull off any stop whatsoever i mean yeah i'm still speechless You're right i mean i still can't even talk i'm like well you know, speechless rest in peace, <laughs> rest, rest, rest in peace zoe yeah that's, the, that's no, the best i can it, say it, Sophia. It, it's funny it's funny because i think not only was I also speechless and I literally got out of my chair and didn't know what to do and I was looking around like what just happened right in as it relates to Frank it also made me think oh my gosh what's happening as it relates to the show right so think about it three quarters of the way into episode one, one. of yeah. season two from season one, what seemed to be an integral character, right? Like we thought it of was her an integral character as an integral yeah. character, number one, right. an integral part of the storyline, number right. two, and number three, part of Frank's inner circle. So right. we knew that he could punish her, but we didn't necessarily think that she was as dispensable as she proved to be because she forgot her place right, and she right. forgot the hierarchy. Yep. That then to me was symbolic of potentially the entire show, regardless of season, right. that if you cross Frank, he is willing and capable to do anything that he needs to do right. to stay in line with his end goal. His agenda. But exactly. it set the tone for season two. I mean, season one, we watched Zoe... Uh, Part of season one, she was with him trying to get information, and then part of season one, she was trying to uncover what happened to Russo and all of the, you know, games that Frank was playing. So mm -hmm. in order for him to reach what his end goal is, which we all know or claim to know is uh, presidency, then he needs to set the tone for season two, that he's not going to have any leftovers to say from his past. Right. So I, I think if they didn't do that, it would have been kind of boring. Do you, did you, did you think that that was ever going to happen? I wasn't thinking about it, but when it did, it kind of made sense because you're thinking, okay, you then if she continued chasing him as a reporter, it was going to get boring. But you know what, though? I think, like, when she sat down and, 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 and kind of, like, started, like, talking and kind of showing, like, okay, you know, I have this against you, I have that, you know, what about this, what about that? It started... 
Because, I mean, there's like a, like, there's one very key scene that I noticed from the show. Which one was that? Was when... In the park? In the, no, even before, after that. Frank sat down at, was it Fred's... Um, the barbecue the joint, barbecue yes. The barbecue joint. And, and he started talking about, you know, how they had this perfect... Freddy's. Ribs, Freddy's, Freddy's, Freddy's right? barbecue, mm-hmm. yeah. Had the perfect ribs. All right. So pretty much, you know, it's like, well, you know, you had to like kind of like slow kill in some sort of way that made him squeak and squeeze out loud, you know? Right. And he was given an option. He's like, hey, you could do it this way. Or when he slammed on the desk, he said, you know, you could go right behind them real quick and, and just kill them instantly without them knowing, without them squeaking. And immediately when he said that, you look at Frank's face, it cuts into the next scene where he makes the phone call mm-hmm. and, and says, Zoe, okay, let's set this up for you to go meet me over here, blah, blah, blah. So it's like almost like a wake-up call where you realize, okay, if I'm going to have to get this done, I just needed to take care of this right away. That's a brilliant connection. Also- yeah, that's a really it's good a connection. connection. I, I, I've always felt like his relationship to Freddy, in a weird kind of way, has always been some kind of muse to how he kind of operates. Because he, him and Freddy, like, Freddy will come in, Freddy gives him some little antidote that's gone on in his life. And Frank sits there and eats the food and savors the barbecue. And it's kind of like a symbolic, uh, like, an inspirational, like, how he inspires, like, what how it pushes to move him and motivate mm. him to how he moves because it's like more of a not a sophisticated life that Freddie live lives or leads but it's more primal mm-hmm. and it's similar you know just how he just like you said Nesta how he described how he slaughters a pig or how the pig gets a slow bleed a right slow bleed. It, it, yeah. exactly and they're kind of symbiotic, these two guys, which is you, you can see how they've been buddies or they've been associates for so many years. Right. Well, I think definitely it's like I think the, the comfortness that they have with each other is that, you know, um, he's so real for his whole shop. I right. mean, to me, I think like no matter what type of business they have, you could probably set that up and make it a little bit cleaner as it is. It's like, <laughs> you know, it is as it is, you know, and then also. You know, with Frank, I think it's one last place you're going to see, what, Congressman, now Mr. Vice President, to be sitting down eating food where he can be himself eating, what, the last thing you probably think he's going to be eating, right. some, some ribs. Right. You know, so I just think it's also, it's almost like going to a session at, a, like, a psychiatrist or, like, you know, like, just a place where he just feels, I don't know, vulnerable in a way. I don't know. It's- no, I no, I completely agree with both of you, and it, and I actually took it one step further in so much as Frank liked it, right? He mm-hmm. basically said, he asked, he was like, something's different about the ribs. I right. didn't think mm-hmm. that they could get any better, but they did. And then Freddie then says, oh, well, I got a new butcher. Mm-hmm. And the butcher slow bleeds his hogs. It's illegal, but, and then he explains the process. Right. To mm-hmm. me, that was symbolic of this season, right? right? Because juxtapose that against the beginning of season one mm-hmm. when he kills the dog in a humane way. Even though we were surprised and we were appalled for an, a season or a show to open up with someone killing a dog that's been hit by a car, right. there was still a semblance of humanity, right? Mm-hmm. Which is analogous to hitting the pig over the back of the head, right. Right? right? So in essence, he did that to Zoe because in some levels he did care for her. So we made it quick and painless. However, the fact that he has now <laughs> tasted blood for the <laughs> second just, time, uh, right? Really? right? He's now he's now tasted blood for the second time. Mm-hmm. He likes it better than he ever thought he could like the previous semblance of power. Because before he was whip. Right. Now he's VP. Right. He's now tasted it in a way where I, I think we have no idea well, what Frank is. But I don't even think it's his second do. chance. I think I think I mean the fact that the way he's done it the first two times, I, yes. I wouldn't put it past him for where, where his position was when the first show started that, you know, he had to probably cut a couple throats to get to where he's at today. Right, right. Fair of course. Enough. I mean, you, of course, when that opening scene in the first season, you're like, okay, that's somewhat humane. You have mixed feelings about it. You're not kind of sure where this is going to go. It, is it, can, can this really be as diabolical? And then they take you down this diabolical trail. Yeah. Season two... Or at the end of season one, when he let Russo pass on to the other side, mm-hmm. that wasn't, even though he, he did it, it wasn't as hands on as actually what he did with Zoe. Right, right. So it's like the stakes are heightening. Absolutely. And he's willing to go that extra step to do what he has to do in order to make sure um, 
keep that VP that, status. Well, to to make sure his agenda and his end goal are met. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, for me on on the other side for Zoe, I think Zoe lost her way. Uh, for me, that's just how uh, just because she got the lines got blurred between being a reporter and then actually seeing whether or not you know this guy that she's been involved with and remember she has been sexually involved with frank and even though she wasn't connected to him and she ended up telling him you're old and this is gross and all this other stuff she was still connected to him that door had been opened and that cannot be taken back she was sleeping with him and she was infatuated with him to a certain degree which is why she started sleeping with him to begin with it wasn't just to get stories i don't mm -hmm. care what anybody says there was an infatuation that she had and then i think she realized be that she has him in her palm to a certain degree. Well, I don't really have to sleep with this guy. He's using me because he needs me mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. which is why he's coming to me because he needs a media outlet, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Now she's involved in this whole investigatory story about Russo. Does she really want to find out? Does she want to bring him down? Does she just want to get a story? I, I think the lines got blurred for her. And once those lines got blurred, Frank is way too intuitive to not see what she's doing, how she's going about asking the certain questions that she's asking. Mm -hmm. It almost became kind of personal because he had already given her some, uh, you know, he kind of showed her before, like, look, I, I can cut you loose. I don't need you. You just need to know what side your bread is buttered on before you come at me sideways or anything like that. To me, she should have, if she thought this guy had something to do with Russo's murder, why would she, she already knows he's somewhat ruthless or diabolical, that she's trying to find Rachel. She saw how the whole Rachel thing went down. If you know something without having the proof, you don't need, you only need the proof for the story. Right. If you want to survive in the streets, you just know. Right. I mean, but you don't have to need the proof. <laughs> I think because she did have a physical relationship with him that she thought she, he wouldn't go to that extent with her. And I think the park played a significant role in this because even though she was willing to erase his text message, erase the contact that she had, she was still asking questions about Russo. And he's like, okay, hold on. I thought we were done with this. You know, we were supposed to start off with a clean slate. But you can't forget, you're still going to be that pest, you know, in my life that's still going to be asking questions. So even though uh, uh, Freddie's was very significant, mm -hmm. she, her asking questions after, you know, agreeing to start with a clean slate yeah. was what pushed him to say, OK, I need to get rid of you. I, I agree. And I've watched the episode now twice. And that's what I thought the first time. But the second time I watched the scene right before the metro station is basically Frank and Claire in their bedroom. And Claire is basically saying, like, so you haven't said anything. And he goes, well, I'm fully prepared to do what I need to do. I always have been. And she goes, says something to the effect of, well, I feel comfortable that you will, you'll handle it. And the next scene is at the metro. Right. right? And to, go, go ahead. ahead. No, finish. Well, go I was going to say, and to move a little bit fast forward through uh, the scene when she sees the... The news about Zoe. Oh, let's not go there so quick. Okay. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> <Go> <laughs> sorry, sorry, because that's really important too. So they're at the metro station. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two. Did you catch it's Cathedral Heights? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, there's a God presence with Frank mm -hmm. at all times. Mm -hmm. It's the first time that they have not met at a public place. You can argue the metro is public, but it's not. Every other time they've met at museums, mm. they've met at um, at parks, they've met not only in public places. You've never had to hide exactly. in disguises on the and, whole time. And why, right? Because normally the way that you hide, you hide in plain sight. But why? Because he's never doing anything that diabolical. Right. To me, his disguise, number one. Number two, the fact that he was behind the barricade, and I'm going to not go too far into it, Metro... In, the metros in D.C., they're the newest of the metros in the entire United States of America. And mm -hmm. they purposely designed them so there are no blind spots. Mm -hmm. That barricade is probably the only blind spot because it was construction. Mm -hmm. Do you right. know what I mean? The way that cameras are, again, it's the District of Columbia. Right. Frank knows this. Frank, A, picked the metro right. on purpose. He mm -hmm. picked that spot on purpose. He picked it. He knew there was construction. He knew there was the drummer. They don't do any shot without a reason. Right. So that means, again, noise, that everyone is focused on this drummer. Right. He's on the opposite side he's fully disguised in my mind regardless of what Zoe said it was he was down. gonna push her mm -hmm. because at the end of the day he was controlling the dialogue 
right. that's why he literally said Jesus. He could have answered her affirmatively or definitively and stayed there, and it wouldn't have mirrored her coming around the corner. He gave her a fluffy answer, Jesus, and walked away. Why? Because then she had to follow. The dialogue wasn't done. Right. He knew exactly what he was doing. So, I you, think thought, that he had, so you thought he knew and had it planned out? Completely. That his, mm-hmm. no, no doubt about it. The first time, hmm. I thought exactly like Emma. It's because she kept asking questions. It was too quick. It was too thought out, as well as the fact that unless Frank is beyond genius, which he is, but still, he turned her <laughs> around. Right. He didn't just push her. He physically turned around and pushed her knowing you can't, you can't trip backwards, backwards from where she was. Right. That doesn't make sense because right. then you would have seen her following, but you can trip forward. Right. You have to be like he really turned her to think right. and pushed right her. Right. Disguise, whatever. It was it, it was that completely was, different was than calculated. any other time that the they train had was met. Coming. I know. I was like, even the train. Like he stopped. just sat and delayed the conversation. Yeah. Exactly. And just, no, I agree. I think he knew. Yeah. He had his intent was to kill her. And that's what their conversation was just before. And you watch it again. There's an intimacy there right. that we normally don't see. Or right. there's a traditional intimacy in their conversation in bed. They're basically saying, like, oh, so you're going to kill her? Yeah, I've always been prepared to do that. Because, right. again, Claire is always brought up. Are you sure you have control over this girl? Are you sure you have control over this girl? So, obviously, he lost control. And the only way to bring her back into control is to eliminate the problem. Now, and that was somewhat of a risk to me because, I mean, but there is... I mean, he's taking a lot of risk in, in doing everything he's been doing because, you know, he said, you know, you deleted my name, you deleted the text, and he didn't look to see and check. She could have easily not done it. And she had her phone on her when he tossed her. So unless the phone is, you know, destroyed also with the subway, then they could have easily found the phone, found text messages, found his name in there. So, I mean, I guess that's just a risk he was going to have to take. Yeah, but it's crazy. But let's let's go back and before the murder, because, uh, you know, they start they started off the episode with her sleeping with Lucas and she's laying in bed. And first of all, she's on her stomach, so she's not connected to him. I Um, thought it was Frank at first before they literally panned up to Lucas's face. I thought it was Frank. Did you really? I really really did. I really did. That's what we got down like that. For a second, yeah. For yeah. a second, because she seems se- so se- disconnected for, and yeah, dissatisfied. Right. For a second, I thought. Yeah. For a second, <laughs> I thought it was, but but then I was like, no. Oh, okay. Who is it? Yeah. I knew it wasn't Frank. Okay. First, I thought it was, and I was like, yeah. no. Who is this? And then it panned up, and it was. I was like, oh, of course, it's Lucas. <laughs> Lucas and she's laying there. In. She's totally disconnected from this guy. Finish. And right, and it's like, okay, so. You had the nerve to act like this with Frank, but then you're doing the same thing with Lucas. I don't think she's like she didn't like Lucas. She was using Lucas to oh, she, I disagree. she was it was a total reel in for no, I, Lucas I, no, to be on her no, team. I, I kinda agree. I don't think she liked she was she, really into him. Nah, she wasn't into him. Well I don't you know the team, but I just think Not it was to like, me. What it was do you like guys kinda think? like a get like a gateway and just, just be like, you know, well, I'm dealing with this stuff right now with, with, with Frank and he's here and he's normal. Okay, I agree I, with... Go ahead, Emma. I was going to say, I think she was lonely. That's why she went to him, but I don't think it was to to use him because that came afterwards. Like, all this, the stories, the uncovering, getting him, getting Janine on, you know, the case, that came mm-hmm. afterwards. But she went to him because she was lonely. She rejected Frank when he showed up to her apartment, and then she went over to... Uh, no, to Lucas's it apartment. wasn't because he was. She was. It wasn't because so she it was, was like lonely. Something happened. I can't remember exactly what it was from season one that was the, that spooked her, and she ended up going to Lucas's house because right. Frank had cut her off. Right. Wasn't it but when it was Claire something came that was and, uh, to her house, and mm-hmm. I think that's what it was, and but, that spooked her, and so she ended up going over to Lucas's. True, but I think Emma's right in the same point that I think that may have been the. The it was catalyst security. or the genesis, right? The, the beginning was the security, but again, they didn't have to continue the relationship. I think, I think that part of it was. But how was she that, ensure that? How was she no. ensure the relationship unless she started what, giving him some? But booty. you know what, though, she should have kept the relationship because, as much as Lucas is a dweeb, Lucas told her from Jump Street, "Do not yeah. go." No, no, he don't answer this guy. No. And she's like, "I got it, I got it, I got but it, the, I got it, choo choo." And you know, that's why it was. You know, she was being a liability for him. She wanted to have. Both, you know, two feet and two different doors. She wanted to still have the information, the intel 
that Frank was feeding her, but at the same time still investigate to what happened in the mm -hmm. past. No, I agree. I, it's called doing too much gone wrong. True, but I think also, though, a big part of it, though, and again, I, I think <laughs> I think that sex does play an important role in the same point that I think that with Janine and Lucas, what she realized in disclosing to them that Frank was her source, right? right. She basically mitigated, or not mitigated, she basically then said, I'm not really a journalist. Right? right? She had gotten all season one, she had gotten all these accolades, right? And everyone was like, how is this no name journalism all of a sudden the it girl, right. right? She disclosed to not only her inner circle, but the people who potentially were the most um, uh, suspect, especially Janine, of mm -hmm. her journalistic integrity, mm -hmm. right? Number one, even Lucas to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. I feel like at that diner when they were all talking, the way that she had the dialogue and she's like, well, I'm not gonna fuck him. She was almost saying it to herself because, again, how had she gotten her previous stories? Right. Regardless of when she, oh, I just realized that I said the actual word. My bad. Sorry, little well, kids. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I just realized. Know, I was just listening to you. Like, I know you're quoting. You're quoting. Okay, and, okay, and, right. and if you watch the show, that's what happened. Okay, sorry. Time. I just realized I'm such <laughs> yeah. a dork. Okay. Um, but I think that what she realizes is, okay, I now have to prove myself because right. they're basically having a journalistic discussion. Lucas on one standpoint, point is saying, no, we don't really have enough evidence. Like, as a journalist and as an editor, I don't have enough sources to bring this story to the light of day. Right. Janine is more the on-the-ground guerrilla journalist who's like, no, I'm going to figure out a way. If I need to, like, throw it up there and see if it sticks, that's what I'm going to do because that's how I've gone to where I've gone as a journalist. Right. Zoe's so sitting there basically like, so I got here because I have one source, which is Frank Underwood, who I slept with to get the source, and he possibly killed people. Right. She has to prove herself. And I think that's why she goes so gung-ho. Because that's why she has to leave them. She basically is like, I need to validate myself as a journalist. And possibly the only way that she can do this is to break the story and to potentially break the person who is her Achilles heel, which is Frank. Because if she breaks the story, no one's going to care that Frank was her source. But there's, but other there's other stories she could have jumped on as a journalist to help validate her credibility. I mean... <laughs> This uh, this this Frank situation was just way over her head. Frank has a tendency to 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 reel in people of the same cloth, and you're either on board. And she started she started. And he uses a little antidote at the end of the episode, and I won't jump to it now. But that kind of confirms that you know he he uses people that he can completely just use, mm -hmm. and they're totally on his team. The loyalty is unquestioning, yeah. unwavering. But you have to have proven your loyalty to a whole nother degree for you to even think you can question him. But like a that, stamper or something like that. But the thing is, I don't even think there's even any loyalty to go with this guy just whatsoever. Like, I mean... Apparently the only person like, he cares even, about even, really even, is Claire. Even, it's, yeah, it's Claire and himself. It's like, even when, when it came down to, from, from first season to Russo, I was able to chop Russo so easily after building him up, setting him up perfectly for the position. Once it didn't work out into his way, it was like, all right, gone. Well, see, here's but the thing about Russo. That plan. was part of the exactly. plan to no, begin with. Ex that's the thing. It's like he sucks in people and make it believe that this guy has my back. This guy is down for me 100%. This well, guy see, is good. See, and the, then, the, the, and without, no matter what, he has no conscience whatsoever just to switch and just be like, you know, well, this is not working out for me. Well, bye. Well, and that's, this is it. he is like that. He will discard you if you prove that he can't use you anymore or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But with Russo, it was part of the original plan. Right. He wasn't pulling Russo in so he can recruit him as part of his team. The plan was to always screw Russo over. But he didn't think that... I mean, we didn't think, and he didn't think <laughs> that he was going to have to off him. Right. It just happened that way. That He was planning to discard him like politically or whatever and not right. use him anyway that was the part that was the plan from from jump street right with 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 uh with zoe zoe was somebody that he recruited thinking that i could recruit this person they're hungry they're intelligent and i can make them part of the team just like a la meacham the, the situation with meacham he used meacham think about how meacham mm -hmm. the whole fake break in last season mm -hmm. okay Meacham discard uh, uh, what did he do he takes he out did, his gun he fired he fires on his gun on down the, the street mm -hmm. like, Frank wasn't thinking that far in advance <laughs> right. but he has to you know he that showed something to Frank he's like this guy will do he'll take it the extra mile oh. for me yeah yeah, absolutely. See, that's, that's why point. he brought him back that and that's and that's why mm. and funny enough that's why I have you now liked about uh, Miss Jackie Sharp 
Ooh. Jackie Sharp is sharp. Jackie she's sharp. she's uh yeah, she's something we're going to talk about her in a minute. But Meacham gets a promotion. Okay? He keeps him on. Uh, brings him on the Secret Service mm -hmm. and tells the head of Secret Service, like, yeah, well, you're going to train this guy yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And that's that. Yeah, yeah, and that's that. So he obviously trusts Meacham and knows that Meacham is down. Like, mm -hmm. this dude is, is... He's down for the cause. He's down for the cause. Especially, he's proven himself. He proved up. So he's taking with people gift, with him. Especially with that birthday gift. That's a pretty... Uh, Double meaning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whose side is he on? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> it's kind of a personal gift to get someone. I'm telling you. <laughs> we want to go there now? We want to go there sure, now? Sure, go ahead. We um, brought it up. Okay, I'll be honest with you. So I have definitely watched one in, episodes one and two, chapters 14 and 15, but I have not gone further. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a little something more there. Like, he likes him, likes him. Like, I can't decide if he's just infatuated with him. Like, there's a certain aspect of Frank's power that entices him. This that entices show, Meacham. That entices Meacham. Mm -hmm. This show is extremely deliberate and in extremely intelligent and very cerebral. Mm -hmm. They choose words very carefully. Right. The way that he says, I'm sorry, it's a day late. I'm not sure if this is inappropriate. What to was me, the gift again? Did they it, show was, it was cufflinks. It was cufflinks with his initials. So it was right. So it was personalized cufflinks. Right. The F U. <laughs> However, so but again, but again, <laughs> let's go there like adults. F U can mean F U in a bad way, right? Or F U in the way that we were using it previously, right? Which is, right? Which is intimate. To say Willis? I mean, I don't right. know. That's I'm I'm leaning towards there. There's something that Meacham gets a little bit too geeked over Frank. Even the way that is he it had over to bring Frank up Frank or Claire. No, it's definitely over Frank. I don't know sure? because wait, 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 wait. okay. With yes. the break in from season one, he no. was because you know, there's mushy mushy with, no. with Claire. And I, no, I think I think there was mushy mushy. It was just like it was cordial. It was Are like, you sure you have not? Cheated ahead? No, and that's why I'm being honest. Wait, 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 with what you. are you talking about? Now? Okay, so no, and I'm we, talking we, we, about this because I've seen the whole season. Oh, then let me stop. Oh. Then let me just stop. Yeah, we'll so stop right there. Then that's we'll what I'm right like. There. What? And the only thing I'm just saying is just because there's this show has symmetry. This show always has symmetry. Right. Last season, the previous Secret Service liked Claire. It would be redundant to have the new Secret Service like. Claire True. again. That's a great Do you know uh, I mean? observation. As well as the fact that the difference is Frank is even coming into a different essence of himself. Mm -hmm. If you look at the scene when he gets out of the um, SUV at Rock Creek Park, look at it again. He looks different. Like, I was like, ooh. Right. Do you know what I mean? He has his Do sunglasses you... on. Even his suit is fitting him a little bit different. Like, mm -hmm. he stood up. Right. I definitely think there's something there. Do like, you think it's... maybe he's taking um, some clues from the from the reunion that Frank went to? Not he at was all. part of the the detail at that time. Not wasn't at all. He? Not well, at he's all. Always... I think it's just. I think he's just. He's getting... been ahead of, of Frank's personal detail. Yeah, I think and... he's just getting really comfortable. Sorry, I think he's getting really comfortable. Mm -hmm. He's starting to feel more and more part of the inner circle. You talking about Meacham? Meacham. So yeah. they're just connecting more and more. And I think that Frank allows him to. Well, Frank gotta... doesn't clip him. Well, you, you got to think about it. Also, they have protocol that you know at the white house mm -hmm. and now that he's stepped from the whip into as the vp um now of course the secret service you know that obviously that protocol was broken uh, of having to train somebody uh you know having somebody put on you the vp's detail that is not even close to trained yeah, on a secret yeah, service level and he's like well that's who's going to be my blah 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 make it happen right so make it happen so for somebody to make that exception for you you're also going to feel like, because he obviously knows that there's a protocol to becoming Secret Service, mm -hmm. and now that he knows that that protocol has been broken, that makes you, that would make anybody feel more special. So he's going to, yeah, he's going to poke his chest out a little bit. Go meet him. Exactly. And Frank <laughs> actually put on the gift. Right. Before in the other scene, and to me, they don't, they don't no waste gifts. scenes. He right. took no gifts. He was right. like, put the good ones in the conference room, give the bad stuff to the interns, throw out the cards. Like, he right. doesn't care. Right. But he got, even Frank got geeked over the gift. Oh, right. He but, was like, oh, he shouldn't but, have spent so much. But speaking like, of the gifts. And even Claire was like, ooh, that's yeah. nice. Right. <laughs> well, you got to think about, he spends, for somebody to be your personal detail, you have to be somewhat, you know, Close to them, and, and he and feels he's comfortable. Seen a lot. And he's seen a lot. He, he's seen a lot, and there's never hasn't you been. You remember even asked about Zoe in the car. He's like, "Oh, sorry to hear about blah blah." You know, he was he was even saying, "I know you. You know, you were pretty close to there or something like that." I was like, eh. "Now, now, just like Sophia said, going back to what you just said, they don't waste any scenes on this show. The fact that he mentioned that, I agree. Mm -hmm. He knows. Oh well, yeah. He knows that. I watched. Uh, we were there. I watched with my know. sister, and she was like, "Is he stupid?" No, but no. But he has blind who, allegiance. Think about it. Who probably drove him there? 
Exactly. That's the person who took him. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. He knows. So, do you so in the car, that's why in the car when they were saying that's part of the whole thing. Like you're saying, they're not wasting any scenes. They are, they're they're they are alluding or they're Everything they're setting something. they're right. setting something up for something to mean something right. later you're on totally in the season right. or whatever. So for the they purposefully mentioned had Meacham say, "I know, about, you know, I'm sorry about Zoe. I heard about it." Right. Well, who the hell took Frank to the, to the station totally to right. begin with? My bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the only thing, Meacham, Meacham <laughs> is not, he's not that stupid. Yeah. You can't be just, he seems like it, but he's not. Yeah, yeah. you're right. He right just has mind. blind allegiance to a man that he recognizes as powerful as he really so is. Yeah. T- did he give a gift before or after the death? After. 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 Yeah. Okay, remember so that's when he... But he, the friend, he, go but, ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah. I was just saying that that's very significant that he gives the gift after just to show his uh, loyalty still. Mm-hmm. Even after mentioning uh, about Zoe, he gives the gift to, you know, to show that his loyalty uh, lies with Frank. Well, you got to also remember that it was a day late probably because he's working with Frank yeah. the whole time. So he's not able to, like, get off and... Go to the mall. Right. <laughs> and go, and go no, shopping. but he already bought it. Whatever. Remember, he already bought it. Did he? Because he told Samper. Oh, what did he say? Didn't he tell Samper? Because Samper was like, "Return it." He was like, "Oh, what did you get? Um, what did you get, uh, Frank?" Mm-hmm. And he's like, "We don't do gifts. gifts." And then he says, "Oh, well, you should take it back." Like, I don't know if he actually said what he bought, but he definitely had already bought it. To me, he had already bought it. Right. Okay. Yeah, and he didn't listen to Samper. But speaking about gifts, isn't it funny how that guy at no point throughout the whole show really, except in the end, Mm -hmm. really celebrated birthday, even when they pulled out the cake? Normally when someone pulls out a cake, even if you don't even want to to deal with it, you still blow it. Right. He still looked at the cake and went and outed it with his his fingers. He wouldn't even contribute. You talking about with his wife, with Claire? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with his Now, Now, I don't know if you, that was symbolic. He put out the light. That was for, for Zoe. Com- when he comes when he comes home, you know, uh-huh. you put like a candle out. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, mm-hmm. he comes home. Because he snuffed it out. He snuffed mm-hmm. it out, and that was that candle represented Zoe not being a factor. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I don't know. I can't remember what part of the show it was, but for some reason, I felt like even though I know she doesn't know, and they haven't acknowledged that she doesn't, know, I feel like Claire knows. Oh no, Cla- oh, Claire, Claire totally knows. Does. That's my point. I think she beyond yeah. knows. No, at that when, knows the, that Frank had it done. Or, or, no, yeah, yeah that she knows that Frank okay. did it. Okay, like even okay because literally again the the scene. Because what before, did she say? Yeah, cause because something I was like, just Claire, Claire. No, 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 it's Claire. It's the told bedroom him. scene. Go it's, ahead. No, no, you go. You Claire go. You is the ice because, queen. Because to me, because right. to me, the first thing is when he walks in the room, he's not going straight upstairs. He's going straight downstairs. What's right. downstairs? That's his video games. Right. To me, again, that's usually like he needs to release some pent up aggression energy. Right. She again gets him a cake. Wasn't supposed to get him a cake. Right. Remember that was the one thing he said. He's like, we can have dinner. We didn't do what. Okay, so the way that he goes like this, what does she do? She and he puts his hand down. She puts his hand on him, like yeah. it will be okay, right? right? Mm-hmm. And then the next, and I don't know if it's it, the literal next scene, but the next scene you see Frank getting ready. She puts a, a towel in the bathroom. She comes out, and you see the news, and it's basically saying, you know, journalist Zoe Barnes worked on blah blah blah. You right. know, was in a terrible accident. Oh right, that's right. She pauses for like a split second, and and I didn't catch this the first time. Again, I watched with my sister. And you can see her. She does something with her fingers. Have She's you noticed putting this? on lotion on her no, face. No, but before, before that, watch it. She's yeah, standing was... in front of the TV, mm-hmm. and she almost does something with her fingers. And it's almost like for that split second, she's feeling emotion, and she's literally doing this and almost pulling the emotion back in. Like, okay, he did what he needs to do. There's no emotion necessary. We have right. a plan. She sits down and literally and figuratively puts on her face. Right. Right? Because that's what women do. Right. We put on a face. We have our no makeup face, which is in theory the real us. No, I'm <laughs> just going there, right? And right. then you have the made up face is how we want to present to the world. Mm-hmm. The fact that she sits down and is putting on blush like nothing happened, but again, she does something with her hand. She pauses again. She looks to the left out like to nowhere. And she pauses and she kind of goes like that again. And again, she's pushing it down. It's she almost like exactly. her and Frank are. They have this crazy connection. Like they say twins have a connection when they know they're almost kinda like the same person in one. In fact, she's worse than Frank that's as far as I'm concerned. Say. They're so two evil sort of a, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Just that's a um that's actually a great uh transition. Let's talk about Claire. Because- actually, you know what? Let's before let's talk about Claire, mm-hmm. let's make sure that one of the most amazing things about After Buzz TV is that you can join the conversation. One of the best ways for you to do that is to go on to iTunes. You go on to iTunes.com yes. mm-hmm. and you simply access our podcast by going to After Buzz TV 
House of Cards, and all of our podcasts will come up from season one as well as for season two. You can also subscribe. So basically, whatever you're using, whether or not it's a Samsung, an iPhone, a tablet, whatever social media or smartphone platform you use, you can subscribe, and the minute our podcasts are available, they'll just pop up so that you constantly are connected to us. But more importantly, what you can do is you can join the conversation by commenting. You can comment and you can rate. If you like what we're doing, you like what we're saying, rate us five stars. Um, you can comment on what we're talking about. You can propose new questions or n new, new storylines. Or if you have a theory or conspiracy, <laughs> please let us know again by going to iTunes.com and rating, comment, and subscribing. Thank you, Sophia. And that's very important. And you guys, if you don't feel like doing that, which we really want you to do, you can always call in, like I mentioned earlier. Call us here in the studio. You guys can join the conversation. Add your theories, your hypotheses to whatever we're talking about, 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. We're right here. We're waiting. But while we're waiting, we're going to start talking about Claire because Claire, mm -hmm. Claire is a beast. <laughs> She learns from the best. Shell, right. Um, but I, you know, yeah, I'm not sure what Frank has learned from her or what she's learned I from agree. Frank well at this said, point. That it's like, well said. Um, she's really, Two peas she, in a pod. she's, she's <laughs> shown that, you know, she, to me, plays the role. Like, if she was a man, she would squash Frank. I she's playing the agree. role. I just feel like he's taken a lot from her and she pushes him. It's like, she has this expectation and Frank is like, Okay, so that's what I sh oh, oh sh she that's what she expects. That's what she expects from me. You know, how some of those husbands that have a strong wife, and it's like she she can communicate something without even saying it. Of course, that's how powerful her intentions it's are. It's like it's like for example, it's like she just sits there and just lets to do this thing, don't say nothing. Right. And then once it just reaches a point, it's like maybe I need to give him a little push to understand right. that um, the chick gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did, like, I mean she we pretty much every we saw it in the beginning of season one yeah. when he was supposed to be appointed secretary of state. Yeah, and she comes in here and she she makes him feel like a mouse, like this, like small. he's this, like this big. Well, he didn't come home for like how like eight couple hours, of that eight, eight hours, hours ignoring her because he wanted to figure out how. He wanted to come with a plan to but present actually, I'm to gonna, her. I'm going to disagree with you. I think the problem is, and the reason that she read him, is that he wasn't spending the eight hours trying to figure out a plan. He right. was spending the eight hours mad. He she doesn't believe in that. She right. believes in you're mad for a millisecond, and you channel that into revenge right. or figuring out what your next step is. And right. that's why she read him. Because she right. basically needed to channel that energy mm -hmm. right. into the direct focus attack that they needed to then play out in season right. one. Yeah. Because she she knew he was she knows him. T they've been yeah. you've been married yeah. to somebody for that long. Yeah. You know them. And right. Said, you, so you had to do some dirty stuff to get to where they've already been at. Yeah. So right. you know Exactly. So she comes home and it's like you don't not answer my calls from nine. She knows he was just vent pissed off somewhere and he wasn't it's not like he had a plan. That was the plan and he wasn't somewhere coming up with something he was pissed he wasn't answering her calls she knows he's pissed but it really wasn't about that mm -hmm. it was about just like Sophia said channeling that energy and pushing to come up with something else you use yeah. that energy to come up with another plan you don't waste eight or nine hours when you're in that position of power eight or nine hours is a work day you, there's mm -hmm. you're losing exactly. you're losing time mm -hmm. you're losing time just being mad for what when you have to move forward you have to push forward and you have to get to your end goal anyway so take that time and use it and utilize it claire's on a whole nother whole nother page and this With jillian are you about to go and talk about jillian? yeah we're going to talk about <laughs> jillian right now mm -hmm. so she sees where they're going right she sees that her and frank are taking it to the next level the appoint the appointment to uh, vice president and she's meeting with the attorney and she knows she's about to go to trial over this Jillian Cole situation and she's looking at files and doing all this little whatever blah 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 and she doesn't listen to their attorney most people in positions of power hire attorneys to give them advice and tell them how they need to, courses of action to take when it comes to certain scenarios she didn't follow that advice by the attorney because she has an ultimate master plan looming above anything and everything that the, the attorney doesn't even know about. He's unbeknownst to him how she's planning this political agenda, these moves that Claire Underwood is making. So what is this agenda that she has? And this is really strange to me. It's like she doesn't want a trial. She doesn't want any public exposure. And mm -hmm. I think that's obviously 
what it was. What do you, what do you well, think? Well, at, at first, but like literally in that moment, what I thought was it was from, you know, season one when basically she went to the doctor to figure out if she could have a child. Right. I thought she was figuring out that basically when she said, when he said, oh, the quickest we could do was six months. I thought she was like, okay, either we'll both be pregnant at the same time as trial. Right. So it diminishes her basically saying, oh, I got fired because I'm pregnant. Right. Because regardless of whether or not someone's a woman or is pregnant, they can be just as ruthless to another pregnant woman. Right. However, the perception, especially from a jury, is you have this extremely beautiful, she comes off as a little bit rigid, woman who doesn't have any children, mm -hmm. firing this peace and love kind Hippie. of not so <laughs> polished you know Hippie. young young woman right but if you now have pregnant pregnant it diminishes it a bit number one or if jillian is no longer pregnant now you have no longer pregnant jillian and you have pregnant claire fast forward that was not her intention <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but at that moment that's what i thought she was doing i thought she was gonna play hardball and she was like okay cool it's okay like i have all the money in the world i'm gonna figure this out i'm gonna figure out how to get pregnant and by the time we go to trial i'll be pregnant so it will diminish any effect that i have of a ice princess that does not have children interesting that's that's a great theory mm -hmm. i mean how did you how did you take it emma um, I don't. I, I knew she had a plan. I just didn't know what it was until obviously we find out her going to the doctor. But I did go back to her going to the clinic and finding out more information. But I thought she was going to turn to um, to Frank for help because it would hurt him and the whole vice right. presidency. I was not expecting of the outcome. That's interesting because my whole take on her looking to have uh, a child was based on part of the conversation that her and Frank had in episode one, that it's like, what are we doing all this for? You know, at the end of the day, who do we have to leave anything to, to, to leave, you know, a legacy, our legacy. Our legacy to. That was, to me, part of it. Maybe like mm -hmm. a sliver of the mm -hmm. whole pie. Mm -hmm. To me, it was all about the political agenda. If Frank's plan, obviously, is to become the most powerful man in the world, the, the you know, the POTUS or whatever, then, it would be to help embrace an image of what a family that should be in the White House is. And that was, to me, part of that. Like, Frank, okay, the VP, well, what's next? He's not going to stop there. So if I get pregnant, start having kids now, that'll get, get us ready to have this family image. This nuclear family. Right. When the election okay. comes around. Mm -hmm. Because the election's... A few, few years away. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a little child and we'll have a quote unquote family. That is how I thought mm -hmm. she was to me. It, to me, it didn't have anything to do with the trial. I thought it was, it probably would have helped the trial. Not mm -hmm. saying it would have hurt at all. And the only reason that I think it did, and because let's really talk about this because Claire was so beyond gangster. <laughs> but after she has the conversation with Jillian, there, she gets the call from the doctor, mm -hmm. and she's like, "Oh no, like I'm not going to make it." And basically, is like, "Oh, tell the doctor, I you know appreciate all of her consultation, but I'll no longer be going forward." Right. The fact that th those two scenes happen at the same time that mm -hmm. she basically offers Jillian CWI, and then no longer wants to to m move forward with getting pregnant. I think there's some symmetry there. So I agree with what you're saying, but mm -hmm. I think that it, w there was also some deviousness. But let's go back to the fact that once she basically tells the lawyer, basically she says, okay, tell them we're going to trial and then no more further communication. She then gets one of her you know, employees to basically hand her all the doctors that were in East Africa, mm -hmm. as well as the consent forms for Jillian's HMO. Exactly. She then proceeds basically obviously to figure out, I don't know how she figured out, she's brilliant, who the doctor was, because there was like a list, of, like just when they panned, mm -hmm. there were at least mm -hmm. four or five names. Mm -hmm. She figured out which of the doctors basically is the father of Jillian's baby. Obviously, then calls the wife, and the wife confronts Jillian. Yes, snitches get stitches. That I mean, was in that, that was case, gangster. Though, I would have, I'd have to be team snitch. <laughs> like, right, right. You know, right. Do you know what I mean? She was like, she, "Next time, wear a condom when you sleep with you know." Well, I was like, "Dang." When Mrs. Applebaum showed up but, at I mean, the door, she's done the same thing with Zoe. But not not to that extent. But it was more of a classier way, and uh, because I, even what was crazy about even with the whole thing when she um, Zoe wasn't when, she, when, she, her, when she when she when she told Miss Applebaum, I mean she even even she said to Miss Applebaum she's like, I didn't even tell your husband, he don't even know, <laughs> you know. So I could imagine her face is like, how the hell mm -hmm. do you know, and he don't even know, right? 
But and the funny thing is, but, but do you realize how she didn't make the connection until Claire told her? Right. That's the yeah. irony. And I think that it was, it was, there was a moment where I think that scene had to happen because Jillian has been kind of like the moral right or the moral center. Like, I'm so save the planet and I'm so above everything. And the only reason that I'm lying is because you and Frank have so much power that someone needs to take you down. That's why I'm lying, right? But it was hypocritical but from Jump because she did mention when she told the story, she told it in such a like, love story type of way oh he just you know but he was married remember that scene right, totally mm -hmm. and it was like Ugh. but that's why but, but that's some why people the wife, think of like oh it was true like, but that's why the wife know. said she goes but you knew he was married <laughs> right so regardless mm -hmm. of whether or not you told him you knew he was married mm -hmm. right so you consciously knew what you were doing and now you're embarrassed because i'm just telling the truth right so you weren't you didn't think about embarrassing me or right. my kids do you want to see them right i'm gonna give a reality because again i think and i'm gonna go off on a tangent i think that often what happens and i think this is what this show is trying to, to do is certain times people who are in certain charities they are into saving the earth on like what I consider to be an esoteric or a theoretical level right. right but not human to human right right so here you are it's, you're it's, like oh, it's disconnected it's, it's disconnected it's not, it's not intimate exactly right. so at the end of the day you still slept with a married man and you had no regard to what it would do to his family right. the difference is Claire would be like oh yeah I fucked I, your husband. <laughs> yes, I, your husband. Two, What's your old? point? You know what I'm trying to say? That's the difference. And I think episode, that right. the irony is, is that somehow we somehow empathize yeah. with Jillian more than we do with Claire when Claire's straightforward. But there's it's something her character. It's the way she comes across, and that's what they needed but, to. But again, most people by nature are selfish. The difference is most people apologize when they're not really sorry because tomorrow true. they're going to do exactly what they want to do. The difference is with Claire, more so even than Frank, is Claire is so clear on what her directive is, and she never apologizes for it. So to go back to the scene when basically, obviously, not only does she send Mrs. Applebaum to basically embarrass her, mm -hmm. she then cuts off her insurance. Mm -hmm. So then Jillian is forced, and to me this kind of takes a little bit of balls, for her to walk into the CWI and basically confront Claire and say, oh my god, you cut off my insurance. But you know, the sever Go ahead. She has no other choice. Yeah, she has no choice. That's not balls. That's her saving her kid. That was, that was a kid. setup. That oh, was, I mean, I agree. That's but a setup. She sat there waiting like, and about, no, yes, you're calling about your insurance. <laughs> she knew, Claire, listen, no Claire, Claire knew what she Ms. told Apple the attorney. Bomb, but Claire, did Mr. Yeah. Applebaum see you? Claire, Claire, yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Claire knew from jump when she told the attorney, "Tell him we're gonna proceed with the trial." No more. She knew she was forcing Jillian out because when she went last season to go see Jillian, and then Jillian kicked her out or whatever, and was like, well, "We'll just see in trial." Blah blah blah. She was like, "Okay, this chick is gonna try to play hardball. Then she's gonna really but learn you know what, what the big leagues is about." But you know what though? I I, I think she is still a little scared. I think she still was a little shook. I, I think it was once. She found out that, you know, because he said, how long would it take for me to go to trial? Six months. It says six months. And the baby's doing four. And four. <laughs> I think that's when that, that, that little light bulb kicked in. It was like, hmm. Because okay, she thought they were going to settle I and she was going to go away. Right. Yeah. And plus, at the end of the day, I think, as I said, where I give her a little bit more credit, where I give her a little bit more credit is that, you know, she definitely set up a strategy that, okay, I'm about to be, I'm about to be you know, mm -hmm. second lady. I'm about to be, you know, have a whole different position. And I need somebody that can take care of my baby, this organization who's going to know exactly what I need to do. And she made a fair deal with her. She was like, look, I'll bring you back. You get your money. We fund your stuff. Plus, she, take doesn't, care of my she doesn't legacy. want CWI tied up in a, in a legal. That's, that's right. bad publicity. Yeah, and right. and, then, she, the and then the rush, you don't get the legal issues. Oh my gosh, I was I gonna do it. Oh, no, 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 you're the actor, do it. No, no, no. I'm gonna let you say it. No, 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 because you're the actor, do it. I would rather a female say it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to read it because yes. I just think that she is beyond amazing. Right. So basically, she has, she basically says to Jillian, she goes, um, you know, because basically Jillian's like, oh, you forged my signature. Like, well, I'm going to bring it up in trial. And right. she goes, no, that's six months from now. You're doing four. No, four months without the medicine you need. I'm willing to let your child wither and die inside you if that's what's requi required. But neither of us want that. She basically is saying, not only am I willing to <laughs> kill your child, right. I'm willing to do it slowly and have it wither and die inside you. Yeah. She then doesn't stop there and she goes, am I really the sort of enemy you want to make? Right. And she leans back. Right. 
it's not a conversation. It's the end of the conversation. Because right. normally Check in negotiation, <laughs> beyond because yeah, exactly. normally in negotiation, you you state what you want right. and you stop. And right. usually the next person to talk loses. Right. That's not what she does because she doesn't value or respect her opponent. Right. So she's basically saying, I'm gonna argue both sides for you. Like checkmate. I'm, I'm gonna let you know. And exactly, that's <laughs> right. exactly what she did. Yeah, it was a checkmate situation. Yeah, it was that a like take it was it like, leave you it. could yeah. take CWI, take twenty two million dollars a year. Handle the organization, get everything that you said you ever wanted. I'm going to empower you. Like I said I would. Like I said I would. So basically, she's letting her know, don't think you're... That's one of the things I love about this show, okay? This show has you judging a situation and judging these two main characters and how evil they are. We could talk about how diabolical they are <laughs> because we are looking at everything from their perspective. But what is everybody else doing if the show is from their perspective that's diabolical and evil and whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then some of the situations and some of the decisions that Frank and Claire make, we would have made the same choice and did the same thing. And there are situations that also make you look at yourself and it's like, well, can I really? It makes you feel like a hypocrite. So you can't really sit back and judge Claire and Frank on every situation because you feel like a hypocrite. The show has those moments that makes the audience feel like I will be a hypocrite. I'm a hypocrite. I've been judging this whole time. And then that self-reflective moment comes where you're like, I'm a hypocrite. I think that's a perfect segue for you to talk about the last scene because I think that that's why Frank talks to the audience. Right. He's really engaging. Yeah, he breaks over. the fourth wall. He's trying on his his new cufflinks and uh he breaks the fourth wall talks speaks to the audience and he's basically giving he gives an antidote about zoe okay and talks about how everybody can start off as a little kitten but that kitten is lapping up milk and as it laps up milk it becomes nourished and it grows and becomes a full-grown cat that actually grows claws and those claws draw blood and oftentimes draw blood from the hand that's feeding it Okay, go ahead, Emma. Do you think that has anything to do with him referring that statement to having kids? Is that... Ooh. Because That's a really good question. Because it would be the same at raising your kids, and then one day you don't know how they're going to use you or if they're going to turn against you. So having Claire be exactly like him, it's okay for him, but having kids, not knowing if and how he can control them, that's a liability again. I think it's a great point. Hmm. I mean, mm. ultimately, after the presidency of the United States, if he was to become the president, the, the, the children would be kids. And, you know, they wouldn't be like teenagers or adults where they're really doing anything. I think that would be threatening to his legacy or image. There would be children. I don't, I don't really feel... I'm totally... Yeah, I'm going to totally disagree with no, you. No, go ahead. You want to know why? Go ahead. Because your legacy can de be diminished at any point in time. So obviously there have been great people that mm -hmm. all it takes is for one scandal that that is forever going to tarnish them. No matter how much we can say that, let's say, for instance, Bill Clinton was a great president, he was a president at you know a time when we were economically healthy, you cannot bring up Bill Clinton and not bring up his scandal. Right. Right? So that tarnishes his legacy. So for Frank, and we all we know from season one, Frank doesn't like kids. I think the reason he doesn't like them is because he feels like he cannot fully control them. Right. Because the difference would be is if if um, Zoe on some sick, twisted level was his adopted child, mm -hmm. she still was not his actual blood, so he was willing to kill her. Right. Would he literally be willing to kill his own child in pursuit of, of his dream or his legacy? Maybe not. So because he can't control that, then he's not even going to bring it into the equation. It's like a liability. Complete liability. That's interesting how, hmm, interesting. Okay, well. That's, um, pretty, that's pretty deep right there. We're not going to actually do predictions on this show this season because mm -hmm. everybody can go and watch the whole episode, the whole season mm -hmm. um, for themselves. Um, we're about to, excuse me, go into episode two in a little bit. But um, you guys, I, I don't even know what to say, but this, this first episode, episode is so uh so jarring uh i guess we'll catch up with stamper later on as he's <laughs> makes sense yeah. as he's uh taking rachel and whisking her around trying to hide her and yeah, and, and jackie and, as well and and exactly and think about his love and he is <laughs> right confused, and no. he's yeah. stamper we have to talk about stamper more emotion yes. than frank um <laughs> exactly <laughs> no, well, that, and we will definitely be continuing the conversation on itunes youtube and on twitter Most and some of you guys instagram and Chew. some of us yeah and some of us instagram <laughs> it's season two sophia <laughs> no <Right>. sir <laughs> okay so until next episode where can we find you guys, Nesta. 
where you can find me. Well, yeah. You can find me over here at After Buzz TV. What about Twitter? Um, as well as on Twitter? Oh, on Twitter. Well, hey, you can find me at NestaGarrick.com. I mean, at NestaGarrick <laughs> on Twitter. And uh, on Instagram? Instagram as well, at Nesta Garrick. You know, it's all at Nesta Garrick. You know, you can always find me. Awesome. Sophia, where can we find you? Um, on Twitter, at Sophia Stanley. You guys can find me on GQJedi.com, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Emma K. Awesome. You can find me at GQJedi.com as well. Twitter and Instagram at Club Thaddeus. Until next time, after buzzers. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.